Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. So we get a lot of people asking about pH as it involves growing, indoor grows, tent grows, outdoor grows, growing stuff, pH, and also water quality. And I had a really good conversation with Scott Ostrander, the, one of the founders over there at Nectar for the Gods, about just this subject. So I thought it would be interesting. This was part of a much longer conversation, but I took just this little chunk and I cut it out and that's what this video is kind of a how-to uh, on pH for water and also water quality, what you can do, and um, just watch the video. I'll talk to you after. Uh, Rusty Out says, are you pH, I think that's pHing the water. You know, people, they send these questions in on their phone, and so it, it auto-corrects. Anyway, he yeah. says, are you pHing the water? This is in regard to, now this is interesting, I, I think, this is gonna be a good thing. So what I'm doing with the, the plants, the little plants, is we got the full-on SLF and Dr. Root is all, all I've been right. putting in there. The so. But I want to talk about pH within the, I know that we don't need to pH that, but is pHing just a function of calcium availability or is there more to it? So, yeah, no. So what's the deal? It's pH. I mean, so, if your water comes out of the tap at 5.2, mm -hmm. you need to pH that because now you're just wetting the soil. So even if I'm just doing the SLF and that sort of thing, even then you would pH. Or you would, would check, check to see if you're in a range. Yeah, but you're, I mean, you have a good water source and you just Yeah, I do. Field, so I'm, your I'm water... Close. I mean, if I'm at the seven seven four, I don't, I don't uh, pH. I'm not trying to feed the calcium, but right. If you just water water that's really high pH or really low pH all the time, you're ultimately going to condition the soil to be uh, acidic or alkaline. Okay. So people that have uh, high bicarbonate waters with a pH of eight and they just water with non pH water uh -huh. or they react it, don't react the water. Eventually, the limestone or the carbonates in that water are going to build up in the soil, yeah. making your pH of your soil climb. Vice versa with acidic water or you know water that's always five five to six point which is you should just be not drinking that water. That's the answer <laughs> is what that is. But eventually you are going to buffer the soil to where the pH in the soil is going to drift, and then you don't have the availability of any nutrients. Any so, nutrients. So when we're talking six three six four in there, we're talking about calcium availability. But if you're feeding calcium at the day, yes. I mean, but we're not so much worried about that with when we're not but we certainly want to be within a range yeah. of what is that range six to i mean really like five nine to seven eight okay you're fine but you know long periods of seven eight you're still going to have that issue it's going to drift so be doing slurry tests if you're not phing at least test your slurries every few weeks so but you it, you as a start to your growing life you would ph the water that you're working with on a regular basis and see if, it was if it's super water. low or super high yeah Okay. Any what, type, any water. If it's get. super high, what are you going to do? Or are Just you react it with pH down. Or, every time before you I mean, do. when it's super high like that, you've got a lot of carbonate in there. The carbonate in there isn't necessarily a calcium source that the plant is readily taking from the soil. Mm -hmm. So I would actually hit it with Herculean to drop the pH because it's going to react to the base. It's going to drop it down with a reaction. Right. And then you've got the calcium from the soluble form of bone meal that the plants can consume when they're drinking the water. Okay, so if you were, if this is just your 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 tea day or something like that, you'd put some herc in there to, to react your water now. Like if so, I'm at an eight, so yeah, if I start yes, my I compost would. tea at eight, yeah, yeah, I would start that by uh -huh. getting my water into the at least into the sevens. Okay, letting that sit and brew for you know an hour or two, and then adding the microbes in after that. Because it's going to be devastating to those those microbes. But you don't want to pH going. after your tea. So if you right. brew a tea, don't pH the tea after it's brewed. Sure, because it'll kill your microbes. Yeah. But okay. pH your water, if you always have eight, then pH your water beforehand, let it sit for 24 hours, settle out so there's no more reaction, and then put your compost in and start brewing. Okay. What if it's too low? Same thing, just raise it up. And you just use it to limp it up? up, because now you're putting carbonate, you know, bicarbonate back into the water, so now you've buffered the water, it's mm -hmm. reacting, um, and you don't need much, because if you put a little in, it's going to slowly dissolve over time but then it's more gentle on the microbes too so if i have some funky water um would you do one of those solutions over going to some kind of ro thing or getting some crazy filters or situations like that depends on what's in the water and then you, you basically have to go to your municipality or your well testing company find out what's in the water what's reacting what's causing these numbers i mean if it's just a little bit of iron and bicarbonate yeah, I don't go to RO or right. distilled because you strip so much out of those types of water. Mm -hmm. But if you've got arsenic, iron, calcium, I mean, if you've got this gamut of crazy mm -hmm. minerals and metals mm -hmm. in there, it's probably going to be better for the plant and easier for you to grow if you have a blank slate water to start with. 
I don't believe in blank slate water unless you are in a community that you need to you use know blank that it's slate bad. water. So, yeah. do you think there's situations where you could have your pH isn't an issue, but you have bad water? Oh, absolutely. Just you get so it all the time. Poisoning type things in the water too. So, well, yeah, minerals are minerals, and too many will. I mean, the plant will take them up because they love metal and sure. minerals. So they're going to absorb all that, and eventually you can get toxicity levels where a lot of people are like, oh, I got this deficiency. Well, chances are you might even have a toxicity from what's ever in your well or city water or I live in Flint. Outdoor as opposed to indoor, is there more room for error with an outdoor situation? Well, yeah, because the outdoor you've got, you know, acres upon acres of cubic feet of soil right. versus mm -hmm. indoors you're anywhere from a one gallon to 20 or 50 or whatever. Yeah, uh, you so you would, if you're starting your indoor grow or even if you haven't done this yet, you would educate yourself on the water you're using. Always. I mean, it's yeah. like, do you just blindly drink water when you travel? Because... I mean, oh, no way. Like, no. no. <laughs> I, mean, I get to certain cities and I'm like, I can smell that that's going to kill me. So off to the store I go. So yeah, no, like you, it's a living organism. Sure. So you might want to try to just take a quick look at your water. If you're really serious about it and it's beyond a hobby or it's your medicine, it's your food, it's your crops, it's sure. something that you're relying on to save money, mm -hmm. then you might want to know all the aspects that you can control and water is one of them. So if you, I guess one aspect is if you got high or low pH, but as far as like bad stuff in your water, do you test for that or you educate yourself like looking at your, how would you, where would you go, how would you go about that? Well, I mean, Google. I mean, yeah. the nice thing is you have a <laughs> yeah. million people who have done this. It's uh -huh. not, you're not the first person to yeah. test your so water. So just look at your town and your municipality. What well, legally, doing. by law, you have to, or you don't, but if you have a water source, mm -hmm. the county knows about it. Right. So there is a well test, there is a municipal test, there is a water system test that mm -hmm. they do, and they have to do it at least biannually. So, uh -huh. I mean, sorry, every other year. Every other year, uh huh. Um, and they should have that on file. So you should be able to request that. You should be able to get it and take a look at it. If it's out of date, you can recommend or request a new, fresher one. Um, but usually getting the starting point of what's in my water. Sure. You know, how much E. coli is in here? What's the bacteria load? What's the metal load? Mm -hmm. um, and then going online and finding out from other, the community. There's entire communities on water for plants. So, I mean, it's a or, huge deal. It's yeah. the it's the basis of it all. Or email yeah. you know email the mm -hmm. your closest ag uh, university. Email mm -hmm. your nutrient company that you're working with. Mm -hmm. I mean, somebody out there is going to be able to help you with most of the stuff that's in your water. Okay, chlorine, chloramine in your water. Do you not worry about it so much? I mean, you know, it's a tough one. It's yeah. loaded. I mean, I certainly, yeah. I've, I've, <laughs> yeah, I've used it. You know, yeah. my, I know some of them. Chloramines don't just gas off. Chlorine yeah. does, so yeah. you, know, you can just aerate that. You know, a lot of people will do a slow distill, a nice mm -hmm. slow uh, settling, and let all mm -hmm. the chloramines settle and only pull off the top. Or, you know, I've, yeah. Yeah, I've always had bustling life in my soil, regardless of my water source. So, what? Because we also were feed feed teas, feed feed yeah. flush. So we're always re inoculating. That's why the microbial world in our industry is so strong, is because uh -huh. we're always putting some type yeah. of life back in that may have been killed by some type of, you know, chloramine or chloride or chlorine. Because it feels like the answer is I wouldn't get too worked up about it. <laughs> it seems like well, it's it a little issue. Again, with, you, know, you know, we're blessed. We're yeah, in Oregon. We're, our we're water's water, awesome. Yeah. I've been mm -hmm. in Michigan where it burns your eyes when it comes out of the tap. So, and that's because they're putting so much stuff in there to kill whatever the heck's in there, in there. or you. So, who knows? <laughs> You're overpopulated in some states. So, you got to educate yourself about it to work to your, your own well, your area. What's your, I mean, yeah, what's yeah. your concern about you? I mean, yeah, it's really up to you. But if you're using microbes religiously, mm -hmm. then I wouldn't worry about it, especially things like you know, these spore form ones, you yeah, know, like easy yeah. teas where. Mm -hmm. They're going in, you're mixing them, and you're putting them right into the system. So the long, I mean, they're not alive. They're not being affected by the chloramines. Mm -hmm. and they're going into the soil, then being oxygenated, germinating, and then they're living. There. So unless it's really just high levels of those chemicals, mm -hmm. it's they're not. They suck. There's no question. Sure, yeah. But you can still grow a plant even with yeah. that crap in there. Well, if you're if you're a hundred yards from a freeway, you're you know, <laughs> there's stuff oh, yeah. if you live washing in over you. Yeah, if you live anywhere yeah. east yeah. of Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's in the yeah. air already. Yeah. So, so. It, it, there's no perfect world. There isn't. All right. Well, there you go. See, that was awesome. Okay, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. 
Uh, we sure appreciate Scott doing that for us. If you have any further questions or just want to continue the discussion on about pH or water quality or anything else involving growing, hit me up in the comments. We'll talk about it. It's going to be fun. I love you, and I'll see you next time. You can save 20% on everything at OCGFAM.com. Just use the discount code FAMHARVEST. The OCG FAM Show.